Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime Pack here again. Today we're going to try to extract the max performance out of the new Ryzen 7 6800U. So with a lot of these laptops and handhelds being released with the 6800U, we're going to see all kinds of different TDPs from 15 watts up to 28. But we're going to go ahead and take this all the way up to 50 watts and see what happens with the 6800U. So what I have here is the Lenovo ThinkBook 13S Gen 4. I recently did a video on it. And the built-in cooler here actually does a pretty good job keeping this 6800U cool at around 35 watts. That's about the max. And at 35 watts with that new Radeon 680M iGPU based on RDNA 2, this chip does absolutely amazing. But uh, like I mentioned, we can only handle about 35 watts with this cooler in the laptop. Anything over that, it thermal throttles pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do here is just add an extra cooler. So I've got access to those heat pipes on the cooler that's built into the laptop, and I've also got some double-sided thermal tape. It's going to stick right here, and it's not going to be a professional mount, but it does extract enough heat to run this at 50 watts without thermal throttling. And we can max out this 6800U just to see exactly what it can do. I want to send enough power to the GPU and the CPU to get as much performance out of this thing as I can. And to tell you the truth, this chip can handle about 64 watts. And in the future, we're going to see some mini PCs that we can run at around 64 to 65 watts with sufficient cooling built in. And we might see a little better performance than we're going to see in this video. But with this laptop here, the max I can go is 51 watts, and it's due to VRM limitations. But this is something I've been wanting to do, and I've actually had a few people asking about maxing out the TDP on this. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. It's definitely not conventional with this cooler strapped to the bottom of it, but it's not permanent. I can take it off, and it does work. So let's go ahead and move over to Windows and see what we can do with this thing. All right, so yeah, I've definitely been wanting to test this out at a much higher TDP. And with this laptop here, all I can go to is 50. It's about 51 watts, which is definitely overdoing it for the 6800U. But uh, it does work, and we get really great performance out of it. So down here, I've got core temp. We've got our total package power here, total package power here. And if I run a quick bench here, we'll just stress the CPU. You'll see this jump up to around 51 watts and our clock goes up to four gigahertz on all those cores. Now, that's all good. We've got plenty of power to the CPU, but this is an APU, so we've got a GPU and a CPU. The GPU also needs some power. So right here, if I start a render test for the GPU, this is running on that 680M. We go to sensors. You can see my GPU clock is at 2200 megahertz, but as soon as I stress the CPU out and the GPU at the same time, you'll see the clock go down on that GPU. So it's actually struggling for power. Now, obviously, while gaming, it's not gonna max out all the cores like we are right now with a stress test, but adding more wattage to this APU can definitely help out performance. And I really wish I could get a little more to it here. That way we could have max clocks on the CPU and the GPU at the same time. But with this setup at 50 watts, it does help out with performance. Now, obviously, not a lot of people are gonna be doing this, but I definitely wanted to try it out. And not every single game is going to pull a full 50 watts from this APU with the settings used. But the first one I wanted to test here was Forza Horizon 5. And here it is at 1080p low settings with no resolution scale. We're getting an average of around 101 FPS out of this game. And if you take a look at Afterburner, I did make it a bit bigger with the other games. You can see that the clock speed on that 680M is at 2200 megahertz. So we are sending sufficient power to that GPU to keep those clocks up. And for a mobile APU, with this at 1080p running at an average of 101 FPS, this is absolutely amazing performance for integrated graphics. Next up, we've got Halo Infinite, 1080p low settings, and we can get an average of 66 FPS. Now at 720p, we can get up there in the 80s, but I wanted to keep everything at 1080p. And obviously with an APU like this, taking the resolution down is definitely gonna help out. And I found with the 6800U and a lot of games that I've tested, 900p medium settings is really the way to go. But like I mentioned, I wanted to go with 1080 here, and uh, it's looking really good. I mean, this is definitely playable. Here's The Witcher 3, and if you take a look at that CPU package power, this is one of those games that does pull a little more wattage, up to 47, 48, but we can go up to 50 if the game requires it. 
And to tell you the truth, I was actually expecting a little more out of this game given the age of it, because right now we're just at 1080p, low settings, and we've got the post-processing set to low. I get an average of 69 FPS with this game. I thought we'd be in the 80s, but you know, at 900p we can definitely get there. Here we have God of War, high settings, 1080p with no FSR. I was really hoping that we could hit at least 30 constantly with it, but unfortunately we're down there below 30, so the best way to play this is with FSR on, and it definitely helps out with these integrated graphics. And here it is with FSR set to performance, we're at original settings, 1080p, and it's so close to hitting 60. We can still go down a bit more with that FSR, we've still got ultra performance, but even with ultra performance, we can't get a constant 60, and it definitely degrades the picture quite a bit. And when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077, even though we're running this at a higher TDP, we still need to use FSR. So right now, it's balanced. We're at 1080p, medium settings, and we can run this at 60. Every once in a while, I do see it dip down. But I gotta say, this is some really great performance for integrated graphics, especially for this game here. If you've tried to run this on your main PC, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This can be a hard one to run. Here's Doom Eternal, 1080p, medium settings, no resolution scale. And we're right there on the edge, so you might want to drop some of these settings down below. And with a few of those swapped over, you can get a constant 60 out of it. Or if you don't mind playing this at low, you can get an average of 76 FPS at low settings, 1080p with this game here. And of course, I had to test out Skyrim. So this is the special edition version. We're at ultra settings, and I was really hoping we could just run this at a really smooth 60 FPS, but we do get those dips. I've seen it go down to around 57 every once in a while. And if you take a look at that CPU package power, it does jump up really close to 50 watts with this one at Ultra. And the very last thing I wanted to do here was test Forza Horizon 5 at 4K. Now I understand that this is a very well optimized game, it's easier to run, and that's one of the big reasons I wanted to test it. Still doesn't make it a bad game, this is one of my favorite racing games of all time. And right now we are at 4K, low settings, and the way it is right now, we could lock this at 30 and play at 4K 30, or we could do a little bit of cheating. Now, I know a lot of people consider it cheating to go with resolution scale, but it's one of my favorite features of this game, especially with these little APUs, and I think we can definitely hit over 60 with a little bit of resolution scale. And you know, even though the resolution is set at 4K right now, scaling it down is going to actually render it at a lower resolution. But uh, it still looks good, and I'm definitely going to try it out. So we'll head right over here to settings. And I'm going to start off with quality. So we'll just go to quality. Nothing else has changed except for that. And it jumps right up. Real close. But at quality, I still don't think we can hang at a constant 60. So we're going to take it to balance. And just taking a look at the performance of quality, pretty sure we're good to go here. And as soon as I swap this over, it's going to be playable at 4K, low settings, on an APU. And I know that resolution scale is cheating, some people just don't like it, but to my eye, it still looks really good on this big screen. And for me, it really doesn't take away from the game itself, I mean, I still have a lot of fun playing this, so I could definitely run it like this and be perfectly fine with it. So yeah, taking the TDP up on that 6800U definitely helps out. It's going to allow us to have higher clocks on the CPU and the GPU. I know a lot of people probably won't do this, and 35 watts on this does work out really well, but I wanted to max it out at least with what I have right now and see what it could do. And when it comes to the handhelds powered by this chip, we're not going to be running it at this kind of wattage. Now in dock mode, I'd say 30 watts would be fine with some of the coolers that I've seen so far on these handhelds powered by the same APU. But where this is going to come in handy is when the mini PCs are released with the 6600U and the 6800U. They'll definitely have beefier coolers than some of the handhelds that are going to be released, so running those at a higher TDP is going to be totally possible. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the 6600U or the 6800U, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.